Okay, colleagues, we move to the final item of business, and that is a Members' Business Debate on Motion 2635 in the name of Fulton MacGregor on Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Uh, I would encourage anybody who wishes to participate um, to press the request to speak buttons or place an R in the chat function if they are joining us remotely. Uh, and I call on Fulton MacGregor to open the debate for around seven minutes, Mr MacGregor. Thank you, President Officer. It is a great privilege to lead this debate in Scotland's National Blood Transfusion Service. Like so many scientific breakthroughs, it was in Scotland where the first successful blood transfusion was carried out by James Lundell in the early 19th century. And a century later, the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service was created. Since establishment, their diligent and vital work has saved countless lives. Indeed, it is not just blood that the SMBTS helps procure, but life-saving platelets and plasma too. The two main things I hope to achieve with my contribution today is firstly to highlight the quite phenomenal work of the service, particularly over the last two years, and secondly to focus on Scotland's need for more blood donors as a matter of some urgency. I would like to put on record my thanks to Julie Boner from the service for her excellent briefing ahead of today's debate. I will also say that I myself am a fairly regular blood donor. My next donation is due in February, and that will be my 18th in total. I hope to achieve my 20th at some point this year. Indeed, it has been through donating blood, talking with the ever-friendly team there, and hearing about the current plight in relation to active blood donors that inspired me to lay this motion for debate. I would also like to highlight that, by complete coincidence, the mobile blood donation unit is in Coat Bridge today at the Old Monkland Community Centre. So, if anyone local is able to attend, please consider booking an appointment. My thanks uh, to North Lancashire Council for continuing to find venues for this uh, to happen. Presiding officer, throughout the last two years, and indeed well before, the team at the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service have worked tirelessly day in and day out to make sure our NHS has an appropriate level of stock. This service continued throughout the pandemic, and staff were not generally redeployed to other roles, something the public do not always know. But the team are now tired with staff absences and isolations, like all sectors, and I hope that they will be supported eh, by the government going forward. In some ways, I feel that they are often the forgotten arm of our health response to the pandemic, and it is vital that this Parliament recognises and commends each and every one of them for their dedication and sacrifices. And let us be in no doubt that this is a vital service, because without blood supplies, so many essential life-enhancing and life-saving operations and procedures would simply not be possible. But as a result of the last two years, Scottish hospitals are currently supplied by the smallest pool of blood donors this century. During 2020, active blood donors in Scotland fell from over 105,000 to fewer than 92,000. This has likely been due to people leaving their houses less often due to restrictions or being worried about catching the virus, perhaps being unwell themselves or not actually being aware that they could give blood during that period. This was a real-time reduction of nearly 13 per cent, meaning 13,000 fewer people gave blood in a single year. Although the donor base has started to rebuild in 21, and Scotland now has 96,000 active blood donors. This is still well below pre-pandemic levels. There is also a varied picture across the country. For example, stats for Coat Bridge suggest that there were 534 active donors in 2019, 409 in 2020, and currently 364 at the count in 21. So there has not been that um, increase in my local area. There is also a 61 per cent to 39 per cent split female to male donors. And this is perhaps somewhat surprising, as men are less likely to have low iron levels and can donate every 12 weeks, as opposed to 16 for women. So, a personal plea, come on, Coat Bridge and Chryson, and come on, men, let's do this. And if you needed even more reason to give blood, research suggests that it can be beneficial for your health and well-being as a donor too. So, presiding officer, I am joining the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service in calling for more people to come forward and give blood. Whether you have never given blood before or haven't for a while, please do come forward, especially now as we are in the height of winter. There are some people who are not able to give blood, such as if you have had a blood transfusion before, so please check out eligibility before booking. But do not worry, you will be given a health check before donating, where, amongst other things, your iron, for example, will be checked. You will never continue through to donation if there is any identifiable risk to yourself. It is a very thorough process. You can find out more information, including COVID-19 safety protocols and how and where to donate, on the website www.scotblood.co.uk. But you can also set up an online account there and use this to change, make, 
or cancel appointments, both for uh, donor centres and community uh, sessions. There are eight different blood groups, and the service aims to retain a five to seven day supply of all eight blood groups at all times, so your blood will always be needed, whether you have a rare or a common type. Please don't worry about that. You will be welcomed with open arms. Rare types are needed because they're rare, but common types are needed because they are common. So everybody's blood is needed. There are also three different types of donations. Whole blood, the most common, plasma, recently reintroduced after a, an extensive ban, and platelets. And at, at my last uh, um, appointment in November, I spoke to a member of the team about platelets, and I'm considering it for the future myself. To inspire donations, the National Blood Transfusion Service has an amazing stories initiative where recipients of blood tell of the huge impact donation has had in their lives. So earlier this week, when this debate was confirmed, I put out a call on my Facebook page asking constituents who have received blood and wanted to share their story to get in touch. And I want to thank all of those that took this opportunity and emailed me in their stories, and I will share two of them just now. Jen from Gartkosh said, and I quote, I had an emergency section when I had my now seven-year-old. I lost a lot of blood after her delivery, which then resulted in needing a, a transfusion. Before I had the transfusion, I was unable to even stand on my own, never mind look after a newborn. After I had the transfusion, I was kicking my height. Massive over-exaggeration there, but it made a huge difference to me. Only downside is I can't donate. And Debbie, who is not actually my constituent but works locally, and thus noticed the post, said that, that the following, that following a pulmonary sorry, embolism, she said, and I quote again, and this is a, quite a lengthy quote from Zygnosa, I was putting blood thinners and very sta steadily started losing blood. In August, this came to head. After suffering from two endometrial cysts erupting as a result of the blood loss gathering in my uterus, I became very, very unwell. My family were extremely concerned and phoned an ambulance. At this stage, I was so weak I could barely stand. My heart rate was high and I was struggling to breathe. As soon as I was admitted, doctors were concerned and moved very quickly. My blood count had dropped from 115 to 65 within a week. I was told 55 can mean heart failure. I had at most two days left before things were critical. I received two units of blood and one unit of iron. Without the transfusion, I would have very likely died. I have been back to work full time since September. This is the first time I have been able to work consistently since contracting COVID pneumonia and the sub subsequent pulmonary embolism since December 2020. The blood transfusion saved my life. I am feeling the most well I have for a year, and I am so thankful that someone donated the blood that saved me." End quote. So, presiding officer, what more can we all do? For MSPs and other elected members, we can promote the work of the service and share social media posts, particularly when they have mobile units in our own areas. Always promote the pre-booked appointments, as the system is working very well and avoids the queues that, that people will remember that used to, used to happen. For businesses, public sector bodies and all employers, please allow staff time off during their working day to donate locally. In corporate, this is a part of a social responsibility initiative, so whatever it is you have in place. I will certainly be writing to local organisations in Cope Bridge and Christen about this. And local authorities, please continue to make venues available. The service have notified me that there is increased difficulty in getting access to the same venues since the pandemic. And this might be due to these places being used for vaccination or testing clinics or, or changes in staffing. Whatever the case, please treat giving blood with the same urgency and make venues available so people can donate locally. So, presiding officer, in conclusion, I want to again put on record my heartfelt thanks to the work of the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service. I would also reiterate the plea for anyone who can to please consider donating blood. These last two years, we have learned how to respond to a health crisis with a great dedication and community spirit. Please consider giving blood even once or twice a year in the same way, like what we have done in the last two years. It really could save a life. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr McGregor. Thank you also for the reminder. While I cannot uh, donate in Orkney because the mobile unit does not um, deliver there, I need to get back to uh, donating here in Edinburgh, and I will make a commitment here and now to make an appointment um, later this week or next week. Um, no pressure on anybody else participating in this debate, um, but I now call uh, Edward Mountain, who joins us remotely, and will be followed by Jackie Dunbar for around four minutes, Mr Mountain. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I look forward to you notifying the Chamber when you've actually given blood, because the actual proof of the pudding and the need is for people to give blood. Before I begin, I'd like to thank Fulton McGregor for securing this important debate, and I'd also like to congratulate him on his donations to date. 
I look forward to seeing him wearing the much cherished silver 25 donation badge and perhaps go on to the gold badge and the emerald badge, things that we should all aspire to do if we can. It is, of course, right we celebrate and recognise the pioneering efforts of those who established the means of blood transfusion, which would go on to save countless lives. And as Fulton McGregor said, it was in Edinburgh that the first successful human blood transfusion took place, I think, in 1818. And it was again at Edinburgh that the first blood transfusion service was established in 1930. I struggle to imagine what it was like in these early transfusion days, where there was no comfy bed or tea and biscuits afterwards, I suspect. And let's be honest, I suspect the extraction methods could be described than the wee scratch that we are told it is today, or whatever the current euphemism is. Back then, the service relied on emergency panel of donors who came forward at times, with a particular patient's need, which is not dissimilar to how I gave my first donation. As a soldier, I was ordered to attend a donation event. Of course, it was a great, if perhaps illegal order, but one that led me to become a donor for as long as I medically could. And clearly the service was nothing like that service is today, which sees volunteer donations of blood being provided regularly at transfusion centers and mobile units across Scotland. And as the medical service progressed and operations became more complex, the need for a far more national coordination across the United Kingdom was required. Cooperation by all four nations of the United Kingdom, which remains critically necessary today. At the time of devolution, the UK Blood Transfusion Forum was established. And this forum establishes the unity of purpose across the four nations recognizing that it is vital for all of the UK to ensure that there is a good uh, quality of supply and that, that those blood supplies are safe and available for all. And this country, I believe, has a proud story to tell when it comes to developing blood transfusion services. We cannot ignore the fact that blood donations in Scotland, however, have fallen to the lowest level at any point this century. Many patients we should never forget, as Fulton McGregor has said, owe their lives to those people who donate blood. But I believe there were 13,000 less donations last year. And I believe that blood supplies have dropped significantly, and there are only six days of supplies of the rarest blood, B minus, uh, minus, which is of concern. And it is an absolute minimum that is required to meet the patient needs across Scotland. So as Fulton says, we need to encourage more donations. Donations are simple and painless and therapeutic. Therapeutic because when you give your blood, you are a fact giving someone else life. Life that they would be denied without that blood. So in the 20 minutes it takes to donate, you're giving a gift that is beyond monetary value. And that's, that perhaps is one of the most generous gifts that you can give in your life. Presiding officer, Giving blood is a very simple act of generosity, which can truly save lives, and that generosity is needed now more than ever. Therefore, I wholeheartedly support the appeal issued by the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service for more donors to come forward, and I would encourage everyone who can to give blood. Who knows, one day, just one day, your life may rely on the gift of blood that a donor has generously given. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr Mountain. I look forward to welcoming you back to Parliament in person where we can compare our silver 25 donation badges over tea and biscuits. I now call on Jackie Dunbar, who will be followed by Paul O'Kay and Ms Dunbar again. Four minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I'm pleased to be able uh, to participate in this debate today, recognising the work of the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service and I thank Fulton McGregor for bringing this important members debate forward. Uh, the ability of, of, uh, of blood plays an uh, absolutely crucial role in saving the lives of patients who require it in our NHS. And to be blunt, without the NSBTS and their donors, we wouldn't have the NHS that we have and are proud of today. 
I would like to start off by taking this opportunity to commend and thank all our staff at the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service and indeed all of our NHS staff across Scotland for their continued efforts throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. This motion highlights the incredibly and concerning reality in that the number of people given blood has dropped dramatically over the last year, and we really need to do all that we can to encourage people to give blood when and where they are able to do so. So I'm delighted to hear of your pledge today, presiding officer. I myself have given blood on a number of occasions in Aberdeen, and I think I've donated over 46 pints of blood now. And I've continued to do it over the pandemic, and I can assure everyone today who's maybe listening that all precautions are, in, are being taken place. So please, if you can, go and give blood. What I think is interesting to know is what happens to that blood after it leaves your arm and where it goes on its journey to saving someone's life. Once your blood leaves your arm and it goes into the bag, it is taken to a nearby processing and testing laboratory where it will be separated into three components, red blood cells, platelets and plasma. It is then tested for viruses and if all tests are passed, it is labelled up and sent out to one of our 39 blood banks across the country. Not a drop is wasted. In fact, I know from experience um, that sometimes a session needs to be stopped due to slow running blood uh, and a full pint is not reached. Even this blood is not wasted. It is used for testing. This has happened to me, as I said, on a number of occasions, and I have learnt the tricks of the trade over the years from drinking lots of water, crossing and uncrossing your legs, wiggling your toes and your fingers, uh, just to try and get your donation flowing freely. Presiding officer, I have been in the very privileged position to have been able to take part in the SNBTS awards ceremonies that normally take place every year in Aberdeen at the Beach Ballroom. The SNBTS are very aware and very thankful for the contributions made by their donors. And it's an evening that donors with 50 plus donations are invited along to to receive a small gift and the chance for the service to thank them once again. As a former Deputy Provost and a councillor, I was proud to be able to present some of those awards. The donors don't think it is a big deal for them to give up their precious time and blood, and they do not see it as doing anything special. But we all know different. So I am going to take this opportunity tonight to say once again thank you to all the donors. I will finish with this, presiding officer. To anyone who is able to, if you can, please give blood. If I can do it, anybody can. I am a fear thief when it comes to needles, and it does not help that I have only one vein um, that I can manage to give blood for, but the SMBTS folk in Aberdeen are brilliant and find that vein every time. You truly are in safe hands with all the teams at the, the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service. You can save a life today, so please give blood if you can. Thank you very much, uh, Ms Dunbar, and I wish you well in pursuit of your gold medal. Um, I now call on Paul O'Kane to be followed by Rona Mackay. Around four minutes, please, Mr O'Kane. Thank you, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I uh, begin by thanking Philip McGregor uh, for bringing this important debate to the Chamber this evening. Uh, and I want to join him and colleagues in thanking everyone who works in the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service, particularly during these unprecedented times. Um, it is indeed incredibly inspiring to hear of the many thousands of people who take the time to give blood every year. Uh, and to everyone uh, that gives blood across Scotland, what you do truly transforms lives, uh, and we are immensely grateful for your efforts. Uh, indeed, the SNBTS Amazing Stories campaign uh, and online page, I think, gives an amazing insight into the positive impact that donating blood can have. However, I want to draw attention to a story I actually read in my local paper uh, of Freya Pennington from Gifnock in, in my region. Freya, who is seven years old, attends Braidbar Primary School and was diagnosed with leukaemia and has had 14 blood transfusions over the course of last year. Her mother, uh, Louise, spoke of the moment that she realised um, the importance of donating blood, uh, saying that she had an overwhelming sense of gratitude for those who did. She added that if you're on the fence about it or it's something that you've never thought about, please consider it. 
because it is so worthwhile. And I think it is stories like that that really uh, can make all the difference. And it's so important that we share those stories in our own constituencies and regions uh, to encourage more people to come forward and to give blood. Because we know um, that last month um, the SNDTS uh, told, told everyone that there has been a 13 per cent reduction in the number of people who have donated blood, uh, equating to 13,000 fewer people giving blood in a single year. And we have heard from colleagues about the need to continue to do more to bring forward new donors. So I am glad to see that pleas for more help uh, to step forward and donate blood are receiving widespread coverage. And I do hope that we begin to see an increase in the number of people doing so. I indeed, I want to also this evening speak about important steps that have been taken to widen the eligibility of people to donate blood. Uh, and indeed, I think we have seen considerable steps and historic steps uh, forward over the last year, with the publication of the evidence-based review by the UK-wide um, FAIR, um, that is uh, for the assessment of individualised risk steering group. Uh, and I was delighted and indeed quite emotional to see their recommendations to remove the three-month ban on donations from men who have had sex with men. These recommendations were accepted in December of 2020, and their implementation in June of last year meant that that was the first time since the early 80s that many gay and bisexual men would no longer be judged for who they are in blood donation criteria. Indeed, the outdated rules, which reinforce stigma uh, and were inconsistent with safer sex messages, uh, have been consigned, I believe, to the dustbin of history. Uh, and it is thanks to the continued efforts of so many uh, individuals and groups like the Equality Network uh, and, indeed, um, their development manage manager, Scott Cuthbertson, who has campaigned on the issue for 15 years, and organisations like the Terence Higgins Trust, that we are finally able to take this progressive step forward here in Scotland. Because I must confess that, like many other gay men, I have not given blood since my early teens, but I do intend to now and to return to giving blood in my community. Uh, I am reliably ensured that a Tunnock's tea cake is still uh, available after donating, uh, along with a cup of tea, and perhaps Fulton McGregor uh, and Jackie Dunbar and others could assure me of that. Um, but really, I think to conclude, Presiding Officer, I want to echo what we have heard already from colleagues tonight. I want to urge everyone in our country to uh, take the time, if they can, to give blood, to think about the difference that it makes to people's lives uh, in our communities. And I also want to call on our local authorities to continue to ensure that there is provision of spaces and sites where people um, can attend mobile uh, blood donation centres. Because at the end of the day, we have taken a huge step forward. Um, there should not be barriers to giving blood where it is safe to do so. Uh, and as I say, I would like to see far more people come forward and take the time uh, to save a life, because that is exactly what they are doing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Kane. I can assure you, you are not alone in having been lured in by the uh, prospect of chocolate biscuits. Um, can I now call on Rona Mackay to be followed by Sanders Gulhani? Again, four minutes, Ms Mackay. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I am pleased to be able to contribute to this important debate and thank my colleague Fulton McGregor for bringing it to the Chamber. Giving blood means giving the ultimate gift, and it does not cost you anything, just a short time out of your day, to give someone the chance of, of life or a better life. The Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service is a credit to our nation. They have been providing safe, high-quality blood tissues and cell products since the 1930s, and that is quite a pedigree. And I guess if we are ever in need of blood, whether through illness or an accident, whether for ourselves or for our children, we kind of assume that it will always be there. And thanks to the thousands of donors, it is. But during this surreal time that we are living through with COVID dominating our lives and that of the NHS, it is more important than ever that there are enough supplies. Presiding officer, that is why today's debate is so important, because it may reach out to people who have always meant to donate blood, and I include myself in this. As sadly, uh, Brooke McGregor articulated in his motion, there is concern that Scotland has fewer registered blood donors than at any other point in this century. The number of people donating blood supplies has dropped by 13,000 over the past year, and estimates suggest the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service need another 3,300 donors per week to ensure that blood supplies remain at safe levels. Presiding officer, in 2016, I held a members' debate in the chamber and had a resolution passed at our party's conference on the subject that Paul O'Kane has just um, excellently articulated, the subject of men who have sex with men being treated equally in regard to blood donations. 
At that time, a man who had sex with another man in the previous 12 months could not give blood, albeit they were in a monogamous relationship. Clearly, these rules were archaic and made no reference to someone's personal risk of, for example, being a carrier of HIV, and a promiscuous straight person would be able to donate blood freely. Shockingly, if a same-sex couple's child ever needed a blood transfusion and they were a match, they would not be allowed to save their own child's life. Thankfully, that inequality has now changed, and in June last year, on World Blood Donor Day, new legislation came into effect across Scotland, England and Wales, which meant that donors' eligibility is assessed on a person-by-person -person basis instead of applying across-the-board restrictions. So gay men who for years have suffered from this discrimination could safely and happily uh, give much needed blood. Presiding officers, many across the chamber have said you, you just never know when you might be in need of a blood donation. So many new mums owe their life uh, or their baby's life, as we heard from Fulton McGregor, to someone taking the short time to give a pint of blood. What could be more rewarding than to think you were responsible for enabling that? As the saying goes, not all heroes wear capes. They simply decide to donate a pint of blood and become a lifesaver. And a special thank you must go to the staff, the really hard-working staff enabling this to happen. So please, if you have one New Year resolution to make that will really make a difference, please consider giving blood. It's painless, quick and easy, I'm told. Visit the SNBTS website to find out how you can donate where your nearest centre is and make that positive step. It's a step that's needed today as we battle our way through this pandemic more than ever. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Ms Mackay. And I call on Sandis Gulhani. Dr Gulhani, um, around four minutes, please. Thank you. I'd like to thank Fulton McGregor for bringing this debate. Uh, I was, for many years, an orthopaedic registrar. Uh, I operated on a lot of people, uh, fixing their broken bones. Um, but let me tell you about one of my patients. I was fixing their hip, something I'd done very many times, and normally quite straightforward. Uh, but no surgery is without its risk. Uh, it was halfway through, I realised that I couldn't see anything uh, because my visor was covered in blood. Uh, taking the visor off, I realised I couldn't see anything because the wound was covered in blood. Uh, my patient was bleeding quite profusely. Uh, we eventually did get this under control, finished the operation, and my patient got the blood they needed uh, via transfusion. They survived, they had a new hip, and were absolutely fine. Now imagine if we didn't have that blood donated by a kind citizen. Eight years ago, I was so excited to see my son get born. We went to hospital bouncing. Well, I did, at least my wife couldn't bounce at the time. Um, things went wrong. My wife suffered a massive bleed. I was left holding my son, surrounded by a room covered in so much of my wife's blood that it made my previous story uh, look like it wasn't a patch. Luckily, my wife survived. Uh, she was given blood. She's absolutely fine. But imagine if we didn't have that blood donated by a kind citizen. For anyone who drives, walks, cycles, plays in the snow, you never know if you will be the person that needs a blood transfusion. Numbers of donors have plummeted over COVID, as expected, but I urge you, everyone, to think about all those people who have accidents, surgery, cancer, all that need blood transfusions, and they might well be your loved ones, and relatives and friends. Part of being a citizen is to help our fellows. Donating blood is easy. A simple and small, I promise you it's a small needle, uh, into your arm and a cup of tea and a biscuit. And that was the case pre-COVID, but I'm hearing it's currently the case at the moment, which is wonderful. But most importantly, yes, Jackie Dunbar. Thank you. Yes, your tonic tea cakes are still available, but tea and coffees no longer are. It's just a drink of juice from a carton. <laughs> Dr Gulhani. Well, a cup of juice will be good, uh, though a cup of tea was lovely afterwards. Um, but most importantly, uh, the person who's donating blood, you will have a feeling that you have helped a stranger in need. And I think that is one of the greatest things you can do. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Dr Gulhani. I, and I now call on the Minister to respond to the debate. Ms Todd, for around seven minutes, please. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. Gosh, what a lovely debate, a lovely celebratory debate where there is consensus across the Chamber and we recognise the importance of a service that runs really well in our community um, and thank everyone and encourage more to come forward and, doing, and donate. So I'd like to thank Fulton McGregor for bringing forward this motion, thank every, all the members for their contributions. I particularly want to thank all the blood donors for continuing to come forward in spite of the ongoing pandemic. Blood donors are absolutely vital to keep our NHS going um, and they are saving lives across Scotland, as we've heard through the stories that folk have told in the Chamber tonight. Throughout the pandemic, the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service has continued to provide enough blood to meet the needs of NHS Scotland. But demand for blood does fluctuate and the changes that are needed to keep blood do donation safe during the pandemic has made it more challenging at times for SMBTS to collect enough blood. So I really welcome Fulton McGregor's call for those who can donate blood to do so. I also want to take this opportunity to reiterate Fulton McGregor's thanks to all of the staff at SMBTS for the work they do to make sure that there are enough blood supplies. They work incredibly hard to ensure the blood they supply is safe for transfusion recipients. SMBTS has plans in place to ensure there are sufficient donors and they had a brilliant response um, from the people of Scotland to their recent radio, TV and media campaigns. That SMBTS Amazing Stories campaign highlighted personal stories of those who've received life-saving blood donations. And in fact, those campaigns led to over 1,000 people logging into the online booking system on the campaign launch day. Now, that's a success. Thousands of existing donors with specific blood groups have been contacted, asking them to make an extra special effort to donate, and that work will continue. And SMBTS has also opened a new donor centre in Livingston Shopping Centre, which has proved really popular with donors. Community groups are also being very supportive, and I would like to give specific thanks to Livingston Football Club and Heart of Midlothian Football Club, as well as the many workplaces throughout Scotland who have encouraged their employees to donate, and I, I sense we might be able to coordinate something in the Parliament as well. Generally, SMBDS has always maintained supply successfully, but it's become more challenging given the ongoing coronavirus um, restrictions. And unfortunately, as has already been noted, we've seen a decrease in the number of people donating blood during the t t pandemic. The number of active blood donors in Scotland fell from more than 105,000 um, in 2019-20, as Fulton McGregor said, down to 92,000 in 20 to 21. At the same time, though, on average, the demand for blood has increased by about 5% against pre-pandemic levels. The number of donors recently has started to increase again, and blood stock levels right now are good. So I hope this will continue, and we all have a part to play in that. As Sandish Galhani's story um, illustrated, we're all acutely aware in this chamber about the pent-up demand for elective surgery in our NHS. And as that NHS recovers, the need for blood donations will increase. In the past 12 months, SMBTS has welcomed over 12,000 new donors. That's great, but they would love to welcome more. I can reassure people that SMBTS has triage, hygiene, physical distancing measures in place to ensure the safety of donors at its, at its collection venues. And yes, they do provide biscuits and juice at the end, but sadly no cup of tea at the moment. Finally, I want to extend a thanks to COSLA and local councils and other venue providers for their commitment to working with SMBTS to provide suitable community blood collection venues in spite of the difficulties associated with the pandemic and the com competition for these spaces. Many of these spaces that are usually used for blood donation are being used as vaccine um, centres. In addition to blood donation, SMBTS delivers a wide range of other vital services, including living and deceased tissue donation and important research on regenerative medicine. As we've received, also, we've received updated advice from the MHRA and the Commission on Human Medicines last year that it's now sufficiently safe to use UK plasma to produce immunoglobulin medicines. So SNBTS is now collecting plasma from some of our amazing donors. 
Immunoglobulins are medicines that are often life-saving, particularly for patients with primary immunodeficiencies. And while collection levels are currently small, SMBTS is working on proposals to allow us to consider increasing these plasma collections in the current, coming years. SMBTS have also played an important role in supporting Scotland's response to the coronavirus. Back in 2020, they provided support with coronavirus testing. More recently, SMBTS has developed new T-cell therapy for patients with COVID-19, which is being trialled. And last, but by no means least, they have also provided vaccine storage facilities and distribution for NHS Scotland. I want to pull out just one point from the debate. There was many good points made, but the point raised by Paul O'Kane and Rona Mackay about the increase in eligibility for donation is such an important one. It overturns such a long-standing discrimination and stigma. And I too have been delighted. I mean, I have many friends who are now able to donate and it's an absolute de delight for them to be able to participate in this altruistic act which saves lives. And it saves each pint you donate, saves not just one life, but it saves potentially up to three. It's a phenomenal thing to be able to do, and I'm glad that more people are able to do it. So in summary, SMBTS provide a wide range of important services to support patients right across Scotland. The Cabinet Secretary for Health and Social Care visited SMBTS headquarters at the Jack Copeland Centre in October to meet staff, and I know he was really impressed by the range of work that they do. I'm going to take a liberty of having a wee personal um, note here. I want to personally thank SMBTS because I am one of many people in Scotland, it's a very common disorder, who have haemochromatosis, the genetic disease very common amongst Scots and Irish, and I build up too much iron in my blood. And the SMBTS make it possible for me to manage that condition in a way that doesn't interfere with my work. I can pedal here from here to the donor centre after work, give a pint and manage that condition. And I am very, very grateful for that. I know it's not an answer for everyone, but it's an answer for me. So I am personally, and as Minister, very, very grateful for all the hard work that goes on. I want to thank the thousands of you who give up your time to donate blood, as well as the millions of Scots who have signed up to donate tissue and organs after they die on the organ donor re register. These crucial services could not operate without the wonderful gift from the donors. So I would encourage anyone who's eligible to give blood. You can find out more by going on the website scotblood.co.uk or by calling 0345 90 90 Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Minister. That concludes the debate and I close this session of Parliament.